The Battle of Kayapit was an action fought in 1943 between Australian and Japanese forces in New Guinea during the Markham and Ramu Valley, Finisterre Range campaign of World War II. Following the landings at Nadzab and at Ley, the Allies attempted to exploit their success with an advance into the upper Markham Valley, starting with Kayapit. The Japanese intended to use Kayapit to threaten the Allied position at Nadzab, and to create a diversion to allow the Japanese garrison at lay time to escape. The Australian 2 Sixth Independent Company flew into the Markham Valley from Port Moresby in 13 Asaf's 47 Dakotas, making a difficult landing on a rough airstrip. Unaware that a much larger Japanese force was also headed for Kayapit, the company attacked the village on 19 September to secure the area so that it could be developed into an airfield. The company then held it against a strong counter-attack. During two days of fighting the Australians defeated a larger Japanese force while suffering relatively few losses. The Australian victory at Kayapit enabled the Australian 7th Division to be flown into the Upper Markham Valley. It accomplished the 7th Division's primary mission, for the Japanese could no longer threaten Ley or Nadzab, where a major airbase was being developed. The victory also led to the capture of the entire Ramu Valley, which provided new forward fighter airstrips for the air war against the Japanese. Chapter 1 – Background Chapter 1 – Section 1 – Geography The Markham Valley is part of a flat, elongated depression varying from 8 to 32 kilometers wide that cuts through the otherwise mountainous terrain of the interior of New Guinea, running from the mouth of the Markham River near the port of Ley. To that of the Ramu River 600 km away. The two rivers flow in opposite directions, separated by an invisible divide about 130 km from Ley. The area is flat and suitable for airstrips, although it is intercut by many tributaries of the two main rivers. Between the Ramu Valley and Madang lies the rugged and aptly named Finisterre Ranges. Chapter 1 Section 2 Military Situation Following the landing at Nadzab, General Sir Thomas Blamey, the Allied Land Forces commander, intended to exploit his success with an advance into the Upper Markham Valley, which would protect Nadzab from Japanese ground attack, and serve as a jumping-off point for an overland advance into the Ramu Valley to capture airfield sites there. On 16 September 1943, the same day that Ley fell, Lieutenant General Sir Edmund Herring, commander of I Corps, Major General George Allen Vasey, commander of the 7th Division, and Major General Ennis Whitehead, commander of the advanced echelon, 5th Air Force, met at Whitehead's headquarters. Whitehead wanted fighter airstrips established in the Kayapit area by 1 November 1943 in order to bring short-range fighters within range of the major Japanese base at Weewak. The 7th Division's mission was to prevent the Japanese at Madang from using the Markham and Ramu valleys to threaten Ley or Nadzab. Vasey and Herring considered both an overland operation to capture Dumpu, and an airborne operation using paratroops of the U.S. Army's 503rd Parachute Infantry Regiment. Blamey did not agree with their idea of capturing Dumpu first, insisting that Kayapit be taken beforehand. Until a road could be opened from Ley, the Kayapit area could only be supplied by air and there were a limited number of transport aircraft. Even flying in an airborne engineer aviation battalion to improve the airstrip would have involved, taking aircraft away from operations supporting the 7th Division at Nadzap. Moreover, Whitehead warned that he could not guarantee adequate air support for both Kayapit, and the upcoming Finchhafen operation at the same time. However, Herring calculated that the 7th Division had sufficient reserves at Nadzab to allow maintenance flights to be suspended for a week or so after the capture of Kayapit. He planned to seize Kayapit with an overland advance from Nadzab by independent companies, the Popun Infantry Battalion, and the 7th Division's 21st Infantry Brigade. 5th Air Force Commander Lt. Gen. George Kenny later recalled that Col. David W. Photo Hutchison, who had been the Air Task Force commander at Marilinan and had moved over to Nadzab to take charge of air activities there, was told to work out the problem with Vasey, I didn't care how it was done but I wanted a good forward airdrome about a hundred miles further up the Markham Valley. Photo Hutchison, 
and Vasey were a natural team. They both knew what I wanted and Vasey not only believed, that the Air Force could perform miracles but that the 7th Division and the 5th Air Force working together could do anything. The airstrip at Kyapit was reconnoitred on the 11th of September 1943 by No. 4 Squadron RAF, which reported that it was apparently in good condition, with the Kunai grass recently cut. Lt. Everett E. Fraser, a SAF, selected a level, burned-off area near the Loron River, not far from Kyapit, and landed in an L-4 Piper Cub. He determined that it would be possible to land C-47 Dakota aircraft there. On 16 the September, Hutchison approved the site for Dakotas to land. Chapter 2 – Prelude The 26th Independent Company arrived in Port Moresby from Australia on 2 August 1943. The unit had fought in Papua in 1942 in the Battle of Buna Gona, and had since conducted intensive training in Queensland. The company was under the command of Captain Gordon King, who had been its second-in-command at Buna. King received a warning order on 12 September alerting him to prepare for the capture of Kyapit, and had access to detailed aerial photographs of the area. An independent company at this time had a nominal strength of 20 officers and 275 other ranks. Larger than a conventional infantry company, it was organized into three platoons, each of three sections, each of which contained two subsections. It had considerable firepower. Each subsection had a Bren light machine gun. The gunner's two assistants carried rifles and extra 30-round Bren magazines. A sniper also carried a rifle, as did one man equipped with rifle grenades. The remaining four or five men carried Owen submachine guns. Each platoon also had a section of two-inch mortars. The company was self-supporting, with its own engineer, signals, transport, and quartermaster sections. The signals section had a powerful but cumbersome wireless set number 11 for communicating with the 7th Division. Powered by lead-acid batteries which were recharged with petrol generators, it required multiple signalers to carry and the noise was liable to attract the attention of the enemy. The platoons were equipped with the new Army No. 208 wireless sets. These were small, portable sets developed for the communication needs of units on the move in jungle warfare. However, the 26th Independent Company had not had time to work with them operationally. For three days in a row, the 26th Independent Company prepared to fly out from Port Moresby, only to be told that its flight had been cancelled due to bad weather. On 17 September 1943, 13 Dakotas of the U.S. 374th Troop Carrier Group finally took off for Laron. King flew in the lead plane, which was piloted by Captain Frank C. Church, whom Kenny described as one of Hutchison's hottest troop carrier pilots. As it came into land, King spotted patrols from the Papuan Infantry Battalion in the area. One of the Dakotas blew a tire touching down on the rough airstrip, another tried to land on one wheel. Its undercarriage collapsed, and it made a belly landing. The former was subsequently salvaged, but the latter was a total loss. King sent out patrols that soon located Captain J. Chalksby Company, Papuan Infantry Battalion, which was operating in the area. That evening Chalk and King received airdrop messages from Vasey instructing them to occupy Kyapit, as soon as possible, and prepare a landing strip for troop-carrying aircraft. Vasey informed them that only small Japanese parties that had escaped from Lay were in the area, and their morale was very low. Vasey flew into Laurent on 18 September to meet with King. Vasey's orders were simple, go to Kyapit quickly, clean up the Japs and inform division. As it happened, the Japanese commander, Major General Masutaro Nakai of the 20th Division, had ordered a sizable force to move to Kyapit, under the command of Major Yonikura Tsunio. Yonikura's force included the 9th and 10th Companies of the 78th Infantry Regiment, the 5th Company of the 80th Infantry Regiment, a heavy machine gun section, a signals section and an engineer company, a total of about 500 troops. From Kyapit it was to threaten the Allied position at Nadzab, 
creating a diversion to allow the Japanese garrison at lay time to escape. The main body left Yokopi in the Finisterre range on 6 September but was delayed by heavy rains that forced the troops to move, soaking wet, through muddy water for much of the way. Only the advance party of this force had reached Kayapit by 18 September, by which time Lay had already fallen. Yonikura's main body, moving by night to avoid being sighted by Allied aircraft, was by this time no further from Kayapit than King, but had two rivers to cross. Since both were heading for the same objective, a clash was inevitable. Chapter 3 Battle King assembled his troops at Sangan, about 16 kilometers south of Kayapit, except for one section under Lieutenant E. F. Maxwell, that had been sent ahead to scout the village. On the morning of 19 September, King set out for Kayapit, leaving behind his quartermaster, transport and engineering sections, which would move the stores left behind at the Laurent River first to Sangan and then to Kayapit on the 20th. He took one section of Papuans with him, leaving Chalk and the rest of his men to escort the native carriers bringing up the stores. King's men walked for 50 minutes at a time and then rested for 10. The going was relatively easy insofar as the ground was fairly flat, but the two-meter high kunai grass trapped the heat and humidity and the men were heavily loaded with ammunition. The company reached Ragatumkiap, a village within striking distance of Kayapit, at 1445. While his men had a brief rest, King attempted to contact the large army number 11 wireless set he had left behind at Sangan, and from their vasey back at Nadzab, with the new army number 208 wireless sets he had brought with him. Unfortunately, King found that their range was insufficient. He also heard shots being fired in the distance and guessed that Maxwell's section had been discovered. The two sixth independent company formed up at 1515 in Kunai Grass, about 1,200 meters from Kayapit. As the company advanced, it came under fire from foxholes on the edge of the village. A two inch mortar knocked out a light machine gun. The foxholes were outflanked and taken out with hand grenades and bayonets. The Japanese withdrew, leaving 30 dead behind. The Australians suffered two killed and seven wounded, including King, who was lightly wounded. The company established a defensive position for the night. While they were doing so, Lieutenant D.B. Stewart, the commander of one of the Papuan platoons, arrived. They had become concerned when radio contact had been lost and he had been sent to find out what was going on. King ordered him to bring the Papuans up from Sangan with extra ammunition and the number 11 set. At around 1730, a native appeared with a message for the Japanese commander. The paper was taken from him, and he was shot when he tried to escape. Later, a Japanese patrol returned to Kayapit, unaware that it was now in Australian hands. They were killed when they stumbled across a Bren gun position. Four more Japanese soldiers returned after midnight. One of them escaped, Dot Yonikura, and his men had reached Kayapit, after an exhausting night march. Yonikura was aware that the Australians had reached Kayapit but his main concern, was not to be caught in the open by Allied aircraft. Spotting Australian positions in the pre-dawn light, the Japanese column opened fire. A torrent of fire descended on the Australians, who replied sporadically, attempting to conserve their ammunition. Although he was running low on ammunition, King launched an immediate counterattack on the Japanese, which took them by surprise. Lieutenant Derek Watson's C platoon set out at around 6.15 and advanced to the edge of Village 3, a distance of about 200 yards, before becoming pinned down by heavy Japanese fire. King then sent Captain Gordon Blaney's A platoon around the right flank, towards the high ground on Mission Hill which overlooked the battlefield. It was secured by 7.30. In the meantime, some of the two sixths independent company's signalers and headquarters personnel gathered together what ammunition they could, and delivered it to C platoon at around 7 o'clock. C platoon then fixed bayonets and continued its advance. The commander of number 9 section of C platoon, Lieutenant Bob Balderston, was nicked by a bullet, apparently fired by one of his own men. 
he led his section in an advance across 70 yards of open ground, and attacked three Japanese machine gun posts with hand grenades. He was later awarded the Military Cross for his high courage and leadership. Lieutenant Reg Hallian led his No. 3 section of A platoon against the Japanese positions at the base of Mission Hill. He was killed in an attack on a machine gun post, but his section captured the position and killed 12 Japanese. By 10 o'clock, the action was over. After the action, King's men counted 214 Japanese bodies, and estimated that another 50 or more lay dead in the tall grass. Yonekoro was among the dead. The Australians suffered 14 killed and 23 wounded. Abandoned equipment included 19 machine guns, 150 rifles, 6 grenade throwers and 12 Japanese swords. Chapter 4, Aftermath Chapter 4 Section 1, Consolidation The 2-6th Independent Company had won a significant victory, but now had 23 wounded and was very low on ammunition. Fraser landed on the newly captured airstrip in his Piper Cub at 12.30. He rejected the airstrip as unsuitable for Dakotas, and oversaw the preparation of a new airstrip on better ground near Mission Hill. This was still a difficult approach, as aircraft had to land upwind while avoiding Mission Hill. Although it was not known if the airstrip would be ready, Hutchison flew in for a test landing there the next day, the 21st of September, at 15.30. He collected the wounded and flew them to Nadzab, and returned an hour later with a load of rations and ammunition. He also brought with him Brigadier Ivan Doherty, the commander of the 21st Infantry Brigade, and his headquarters, who took charge of the area. Around 1800 hours, six more transports arrived. Vasey was concerned about the security of the Kyapit area, as he believed that the Japanese were inclined to continue with a plan once it was in motion. Taking advantage of good flying weather on 22nd of September, 99 round trips were made between Nadzab and Kayapit. Most of the 216th's infantry battalion, and some American engineers were flown in. The 214th's infantry battalion and the battery of the 24th's field regiment arrived on 25 September, and Brigadier Kenneth Ether's 25th infantry brigade began to arrive two days later, freeing Doherty to advance on Dumpu. Chapter 4 Section 2, Base Development Kyapit did not become an important airbase. By the time engineering surveys of the area had been completed, as a direct consequence of the victory at Kyapit, Doherty's men had captured Gusp. There, the engineers found a well-drained area with soil conditions suitable for the construction of all-weather airstrips, an unobstructed air approach and a pleasant climate. It was therefore decided to limit construction at the swampy and malarial Kaya Pit and concentrate on Guspa, where the US 871st, 872nd and 875th Airborne Aviation Engineer Battalions constructed 10 airstrips and numerous facilities. Although some equipment was carried on the trek overland, most had to be flown in and nearly all of it was worn out by the time the work was completed. The first P-40 Kitty Hawk fighter squadron began operating from Gusp in November and an all-weather fighter runway was completed in January 1944. The airstrip at Gusp paid for itself many times over in the quantity of Japanese aircraft, equipment and personnel destroyed by Allied attack missions projected from it. Chapter 4 Section 3, War Crimes Three natives were found at Kaya Pit who had been tied with rope to the uprights of a native hut and had then been bayoneted. As a result of the Moscow Declaration, the Minister for External Affairs, Dr. H. V. Evert, commissioned a report by William Webb on war crimes committed by the Japanese. Webb took depositions from three members of the two sixth independent company about the Kaya Pit incident which formed part of his report which was submitted to the United Nations War Crimes Commission in 1944. Chapter 4 Section 4, Results The 2-6th Independent Company had defeated the vanguard of Narkai's force and stopped his advance down the Markham Valley. The Battle of Kyapit accomplished Vasey's primary mission, for the Japanese could no longer threaten Nadzab. 
It opened the gate to the Ramo Valley for the 21st Infantry Brigade, provided new forward fighter airstrips for the air war against the Japanese, and validated the Australian Army's new training methods and the organizational emphasis on firepower. Vasey later told King that we were lucky, we were very lucky. King countered that if you're inferring that what we did was luck, I don't agree with you sir because I think we weren't lucky, we were just bloody good. Vasey replied that what he meant was that he, Vasey, was lucky. He confided to Herring that he felt that he had made a potentially disastrous mistake, it is quite wrong to send out a small unit like the two-sixths independent company so far that they cannot be supported. The Japanese believed that they had been attacked by an Australian force in unexpected strength. Japanese historian Tanaka Kengoro said that the mission of the Narkai detachment achieved the objective of threatening Nadzab so as to draw Allied attention away from the troops escaping from Leh. However, Narkai failed in his intention to hold Kayapit, while the Allies secured it as a base for future operations. Australian historian David Dexter said that the leisurely Narkai was outwitted by the quick thinking and aggressive Vasey. In the end, Vasey had moved faster, catching the Japanese off balance. The credit for getting to Kayapit went first to the Asaf aircrews that managed to make a difficult landing on the rough airstrip at La Rome. The 2-6th Independent Company proved to be an ideal unit for the mission, as it combined determined leadership with thorough training and effective firepower. For his part in the battle, King was awarded the Distinguished Service Order on 20 January 1944. He considered it a form of unit award, and later regretted not asking Whitehead for an American Distinguished Unit Citation, such as was awarded to D Company of the 6th Battalion, Royal Australian Regiment, for a similar action in the Battle of Long Tan in 1966.